Hi, and welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today in the show, we have Jackie Huntley. She is a preventive medicine physician and a physician coach. She wrote the Kevin MD article, Medicine for the Soul Harness the Power of the Humanities to Counteract Burnout. Jackie, welcome to the show. I'm delighted to be here, Kevin. We'll get into your article in a little bit, but first off, can you share your story and your journey to where you are today? Yeah, sure. Well, I've kind of had a very eclectic background with my family living in different countries when I was growing up, and a lot of this was following my physician father, who was a geographical pathologist, and then particularly moved into cancer research. And that triggered my interest in medicine, but also particularly in the fields of public health and disease Mm -hmm. prevention. I went to medical school in England, Birmingham, England, and then we moved to the, the States where I, after my, I'd done some residency work and family practice in England and then finished that, finished training in family practice and preventive medicine in, at UNC in Chapel Hill and at Emory in Atlanta. Uh, I received my MPH in epidemiology and that was when I was particularly interested in looking into preventive medicine. Um, when I was running a women's wellness center, um, After my training, that's where I became particularly interested in the worried well. Mm -hmm. This kind of played into my background of prevention. Um, And these are patients who aren't necessarily seen as sick, but are very stressed, and they certainly aren't thriving. And I began to look at other tools at that time that I felt could help them other than therapy or drugs. And that really took me into the fields of exercise, nutrition, uh, yoga, meditation. But along with that, I also began to explore um, aspects of the humanities, whether it was in narrative medicine or and other things that might be of value for these patients. Uh, I had a I was working at the VA in Atlanta and actually had a very powerful experience of seeing this in action. I had the privilege to to see the organization theater of war and to hear about their work with veterans and PTSD Mm -hmm. and traumatic brain injury and hearing the testimonials from the veterans after they had watched um, the play Ajax by Sophocles and how they found that this was the first time they'd ever heard their story told and that just seeing it done through theater was extremely powerful for them. So that really reinforced this concept of, you know, to me is like there are many modalities that we might be using, not only for patients, but also for physicians. Um, My last position was as a, um, in clinical medicine and was on the faculty of a family medicine program. Mm -hmm. Um, I was asked to be part of that program to teach lifestyle medicine, preventive medicine, and also introduce the residents to the concepts of mind-body medicine. And this was both working with patients and with the residents. Um, But alongside that, I also incorporated aspects of narrative medicine, and particularly the work of Rita Sharon, and also introduced them to music Mm -hmm. and um, other disciplines, such as gardening and entrepreneurship. So I was really trying to expand all the resources that they might use to further their education, but enhance how they would interact with patients. Uh, I'd received coach training prior to that, and I used it with my patients there, but then I found I was working a lot with the, my actual colleagues, and I became more and more interested in physician well-being and leadership. Um, but a unique opportunity that I had there as well was that I met the conductor of the Savannah Philharmonic Orchestra, uh, Philharmonic Orchestra, and Peter Shannon, who's now director of his own institute, the American Institute for Music and Healing, was actually uh, instrumental in bringing a lot of innovative programs to the um, Anderson Cancer Center there. So we collaborated and continue to collaborate on bringing, he was bringing music to, to patients, but we expanded that to how can we use music in addressing um, physician well-being, burnout, and um, leadership skills, whether that would have any application there. All right. So let's transition into your Kevin MD article. Will you talk more about that intersection between the humanities and healthcare? It's titled Medicine for the Soul, Harness the Power of the Humanities to Counteract Burnout. Now, for those who didn't read that article, just walk my audience through it and share the story of why you decided to write it. Yeah, it it came out of an experience I had. I heard from a friend about a physician she she knew who was working in a very demanding job. And um, this this physician was describing how, you know, she was doing yoga and meditation and exercise. And they were all actually beginning to feel at that time like 
more work. Mm-hmm. It was work. And yet she, she really didn't feel that just going to a hot bath and a glass of wine or whatever, whatever drink of choice was going to really help her de-stress and also manage the conflicts that she was having at work. So after that conversation, I was thinking about the people I had known, um, particularly the inspirational people I'd known in medicine and people who I often to myself call the wise healers. And not only were these people excellent clinicians, but they were also, they just, they were influential and thriving leaders and they, they just radiated compassion, Mm -hmm. humility, humor, and they also had a strong dose of common sense. But the more I thought about them, I realized that all these individuals had pursued interests outside of medicine Mm -hmm. and in many different fields, whether it's music, literature, art, and even though these were might be seen as hobbies or just pleasurable pursuits, it seemed to me that they had they might have been instrumental in giving these people more skills, and that they really were almost like creative crucibles. These these act, these activities, which were often in the humanities, really had taught them something about how to cultivate joy or being mindful or communication, how to be creative and compassionate. So when I was thinking back to this um, physician and what she was describing, I knew she was a musician and I wondered, I thought, I wonder if really what might be invaluable now is returning to her music Mm -hmm. and reincorporating that into her life as a way not only to regain balance, but to even find more perspective and equanimity in the work that she was doing at, you know, at her job. So physicians come from a variety of backgrounds. Of, of course, we have physicians who come from a pre-medical science background, but we have a lot of physicians who are wonderful doctors who also come from a humanities background. Now, for those doctors who are experiencing burnout and fatigue and who actually don't come from a background in humanities, how do you propose incorporating some humanities into their current life? Well, I, obviously, it depends um, to a certain extent of, you know, where they're at in their career. Mm-hmm. You know, ideally, if it were in medical school, it would be ideal to see if this can be incorporated, as is being done in certain medical schools and residencies, incorporated into their training. Um, and so whether, um, and some, as we all know that, you know, narrative medicine started to be incorporated, art and theater, and I mentioned those in the article. Um, so ideally, that would be start early. I think if you're looking at physicians who are in practice, I would say the biggest step is first of all, to give themselves permission, Mm -hmm. permission to say, I need to explore something else. I need to give myself the time and I need to find something that resonates with me that, that I think I would enjoy and just say, I have an open mind to the exploration. So this could be depending on what, they gravitated to if they'd been they might have been a reader and as i mentioned in the article i i had actually for a period of time because of lack of time i gave up other reading and i i felt not only the missing of pleasure i i felt i missed perspective i Mm -hmm. missed other points of view i missed learning life learning um so i think the first thing is to think about the things that they, they know they might be interested in or something they've always wanted to explore and just go ahead and engage in whatever that might be, whether it's um, music is a common one. You know, many physicians have musical interests, interests um, or musical backgrounds and to re-engage with that and re-engage it with it as a way of being a very valuable tool for them that it will have benefits, just be open to the possible benefits. Um, not feeling like that is a waste of time and uh, just, just maybe seeing it as an exploration and bringing a curious mindset to it. So I think you start with what you might be interested right away with and then look at the opportunities that are out there. I've talked to so many physicians who have that background in the humanities. There are plenty of physicians, for instance, who are musicians. I'm a musician myself before I went into medical school. And a lot of them say that the humanities improve their skills as doctors. It improves their relationships with patients. Can you talk further about how the humanities can make physicians better doctors? Yeah, I think, well, let's take, for example, if you take music, Um, And you just take the idea of music is a listening skill, Mm -hmm. 
but people who come from a musical background, who've been engaged in it, they've learned how to really listen, you know, to really get the impact of the music. They've learned how to pay attention, to really actively be present with what they're hearing. And uh, we all know that with patients, that's one of the biggest challenges sometimes is that we're not present. We aren't actively listening. Or with, even with our colleagues, you know, we're, we're, all re- we're all waiting to say what we want to say. Mm. So I think just using music as an example, and the, the great value with music is there's no intermediary. It's just you and the music. You just, you just listen and you pay attention. On top of that is, you know, the emotions you might experience. Seeing the emotions that you are activated when you listen to music and and just learning how you manage those emotions when they come up. So that's one example for that with uh, with music. When you look at art, and there's been some really interesting, uh, you know, work and um, uh, in the article I mentioned Mangione, and he mentions... um, you know, just the experience of looking at art Mm -hmm. and how that can be extremely valuable, particularly if you're looking at uh, medical students and residents to observe, to really pay attention. And what do you see? And I think we all, we all know that the more we really train our eye, the more we see, but the untrained eye doesn't see. So that looking at art and doing that in a skillful way can really cha- train your eye to observe. So that, that's just a, a couple of examples who I, where I think, um, you know, it can be really valuable. Um, the other way that I've been um, exploring, particularly with, um, with music, coming back to music, is when you are present and listening to others, it, allow, it really opens the door to communication. Mm -hmm. And so it really enhances not only what you might be hearing and taking in, say, from a patient, but how what you're how you interact with your colleagues or um, and other people. So it really has an impact that could have on on conflict and, um, you know, interprofessional uh, communication. We're talking to Jackie Huntley. She is a preventive medicine physician and a physician coach. She wrote the Kevin MD article, Medicine for the Soul, Harness the Power of the Humanities to Counteract Burnout. Jackie, you're a full-time physician coach. Um, Can you share some of the challenges that you're seeing in your physician clients and some of your top tips that you're recommending to help them? Yeah, what I see with physicians is there's really often a loss, um, apart from the character feelings of exhaustion, um, fatigue, lack of time. But there's a, a sense of a loss of meaning and purpose in you know, all the characteristics that we associate with burning, burnout, meaning and purpose, the inability to experience joy. Uh, physicians often feel they have to go it alone if they're struggling. And so the, this feeling of isolation is, it can be very strong. And there's often a strong collusion of silence between physicians. They don't share mm-hmm. um, what, what's going on for them. Uh, in addition, you know, communication, conflict challenges, um, these are very, very real. And, um, and I just think a, a general sense of feeling often very trapped that they're, they're working in environments that they're not thriving in, that may not even reflect their values, but they don't know how to shift gears or you know, either be part of the solution or just move on. And so I, what I see in coaching is the biggest things that I feel as, um, that I have to offer as a coach is that the idea that um, self-care is extremely important, mm-hmm. that it starts with yourself and that by starting with self-care, which and self, particularly self-compassion, these are not self-absorbed, selfish things to do. These are the doorway into actually thriving once again as a human being. And by doing that, you are ultimately going to be able to thrive as a physician. And that inevitably, if there is no taking care of yourself and managing yourself, you will burn out. And my final question. What's your take-home message that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? What I would like to leave them with is to feel that 
even though there may seem many obstacles and that we're living in chaotic, changing times, to always maintain a sense of possibility and hope mm -hmm. and to reach out for support whenever you need it and to know that you're not alone in this, that many people are facing these challenges and to just build a whole web of support for yourself and uh, just always stay engaged that your future has possibility. Jackie, thank you so much for sharing your time and insight. And thanks again for being on the show. All right.